broadcasting live from the loading ready run orbiting underground moon base. It's the Lurcast. Twentieth anniversary edition. I'm Graham. And I'm Paul. And this is episode ten, the final episode. Apparently, they're very litigious about that song. Really? We use it every year at Desert Bus, but like, if you want, not maybe not litigious, but like, if you want to actually use it, Europe is like, great, that'll be sixty thousand dollars or something ridiculous. I mean, look, you got to protect your, got to protect your hits, I suppose. So yeah, we are now sort of it's it's the home stretch, really. Yeah. I mean, not just of this podcast, but also of what we're talking about on it, which is it's twenty twenty to now, right? Yeah. We're here, we're recording this in this episode anyway. We started earlier, but we're recording this episode in September twenty twenty three. I'm sure by now it's become almost a bit of a meme that it's like, oh, you know, these were pretty important years for Lonely Ready Run. I don't know if the, the last couple of years were necessarily important years for the growth of Loading Ready Run. Uh it, or maybe they were, but not in the way that we would have hoped. Uh, they certainly were important. And may may you may you uh, live in interesting times, kind of way. Yeah, no kidding. Ew, TMI. Early in 2020, we we've talked a lot about things that the pandemic prevented us from doing. Friday nights, more Road Quest, other stuff. But what what did we do? Well, before everything shut down we did have a meeting and uh you and me and james and kathleen and beej and heather i think mm. and we were like hey there's this flu going around yeah uh, they're taking some more serious precautions in china but they say that it might get around uh what do we do if we have to go into quarantine for a month or two you know what do we what do we do about that and i'll admit i'll take the l on this that at the time i was like eh, all right sure i guess we should have this meeting fine you know mm -hmm. i was like yeah all right you know and we sat down and we were like okay well what what can we do how would we structure this what changes would we make okay and we sort of hashed that all out and afterwards i said I think I said it out loud and I feel stupid for it now, obviously, but I was like, well, I'm glad we had that meeting. We're never going to need to use any of that that we discussed, but nice that we had that talk, I guess. Mm. And I want to say, gosh, three weeks later, maybe four weeks. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, womp womp. that was a, uh, an abrupt transition. Let me, let me tell you, looking back at it, I'm, immensely proud of how quickly and how well we adapted to producing as much of what we did before under lockdown circumstances and in such quality as we did yeah it was it was an interesting process to you know to think about the different the 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 different things that we produced yeah both streams and pre-recorded content and various other things mm -hmm. and yeah it's like how how do these work in a remote setting we did see a spike in viewership in april 2020 i'll tell you that yeah like, it's not i don't think it i think i think some people stuck around but there was definitely you know when when people were in that initial mode of like oh okay i guess we get two weeks off work sweet i'll just stay at home and watch some twitch you know uh you know there was quite a big spike there but then as people realized oh no no we're still gonna have to do our normal jobs just in a different way than before then it sort of sort of and, plateaued downwards but there was quite an initial spike and i mean we were you know very lucky in that uh we were able to pivot uh, most of our work into the remote setup. The Canadian the B BC government had things for, um, uh, you know, to, to like help cover employee wages and this kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't think we, we I don't think we qualified for which any we of that. didn't qualify for because our revenue didn't actually go down enough. Yeah. 
Uh, which we, we were not, is, which, you know, we still paid for the old moon base, right? And we asked the landlord, we're like, hey, we're not using this place. It's completely empty. Is there anything we can do? And he was sort of like, no. Nope. So you can apply for a grant, I guess. And we're like, thanks, buddy. Really? I nice, mean, I, but yeah. At a certain point, we set it up so that like there was like one person coming in and editing every once in a while. Yeah, but but initially no one was coming into the office for yeah. the first for the first little while, which was very weird. The few times that I did have to go into like, which of course was on foot because we didn't want to take a bus, but it's like the few times when we did walk in to grab something was very very weird. This was I don't know how, how you how much you remember this. This at least around here, this was still like you know very early days. This was like wipe down all your groceries. It was like you know you go to the grocery store. You know, once every two weeks, you limit how often you go inside. You wipe all your stuff down, and you know, yeah, there was even, home even, delivery. It was like, it was it, like, can I open the window? Like, what? Like, what? What? You know, the the, the obviously the the uh, um, uh, the messaging was all over the place. Yeah, which is all, all all sorts of legitimate reasons for that, but it was very confusing. There was sort of this additional aspect of it which especially started coming into it as the pandemic went on mm. is that you know victoria uh uh i mean bc uh or as a whole um you know came off relatively well yeah. during the pandemic i say relatively yeah. obviously and initially stuff. things have been weird since uh, and and victoria and vancouver island in particular um, for a very long time during the pandemic was comparatively unscathed mm. uh, due to, you know, people just not travel. You know, we had to have a big chunk of water. So yeah. People weren't really traveling too much. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, that isn't the case anymore. But for a long time, and so there was a lot of this, like, nobody has it on Vancouver Island. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Does it matter if we're together? But then, but, but then also it's like, just because it's probably relatively safe yeah. here on Vancouver Island, um, it still is isn't a good. Um, it doesn't. It's not a good idea to for us to be like, "Hey, we're hanging out together. Isn't that great?" You can't at home. Yeah, that would be. But bad. we can. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's it's yeah. funny too because like I was talking to friends of mine who also were streamers right mm. and their job didn't change right right because it's like their thing was it's, just they're a solo streamer from home you know so it was great for not it was not great it was the transition to lockdown was easy for them yeah. great was obviously the wrong word there uh it was a lot more challenging for us because we do so much that we have the office for the purpose of doing stuff live and in person and everything and so instead of everyone coming to the office it was like everyone sending a stream to paul's computer like yeah god you were the central nexus for so much for so long yeah we did it for you know i i did a full uh, uh upgrade on my uh home internet good thing uh to get uh, a lot faster internet and then also um uh we got i i initially was using the computer from the office mm -hmm. uh and then we actually i actually got a computer specifically for for doing the streams from home which i still have i call it my the studio p computer <laughs> nice um to go along with studio a b and c here at the office um and uh yeah and, and and the sort of technology behind uh doing you know multi-person multi uh location streams uh really evolved not just our usage of it but you know the whole world's uh usage right every you know initially we were having you know you have like a zoom call and then you were sort of trying to like crop on the different people and then somebody would leave the call and everyone would reorganize and all the crops would break Yeah, and there was all this stuff. And then, uh, you know, new technologies or, or new, new things came out with, you know, um, video ninja and, and, and there's d different stuff. And then, and the other, the other fun thing was like everybody's home setup, uh, sort of got gradually better over the course of this pandemic as well. Yeah. Everyone started, uh, you know, people had 
crappy webcams or whatever. And then, you know, suddenly everyone started getting Yeti mics. And then everyone started upgrading from like the Yeti mics to like even better mics. Yeah. Well, cause I, <laughs> cause like Kathleen does her home stream and had done that for a couple of years. And so I'd bought her some, like I personally had bought her some, some things to like improve the stream, like as Christmas presents or whatever, like a nicer mic or some better lights or whatever. Uh, but we didn't really, we didn't do loading really run stuff from home. I mean, no. like occasional things, but not, not really. And so it was anyone who didn't already have like a, a dedicated daily home stream was suddenly like, gosh, I guess I got to get a better webcam. Couldn't buy a webcam in town couldn't, for couldn't love buy. nor money. No, no. Uh, and, and, you know, and lights. And of course the other big thing was, um, magic streaming, paper magic streaming Ugh. behind the scenes, uh, pictures that people posted of the contraptions they came up with in order to, <laughs> to have like an overhead camera, uh, you know, having ha, have like big, you know, um, cantilevered, uh, you know, like a big like ruler or something coming out with big weights on one end, uh, or you know, trying to balance different things. Uh, it, it was it was a real, uh, real problem. We did a pre pre release, yeah, for Icoria that I barely remember at all, especially at the time. Mm -hmm. People's home setups for magic streaming weren't that good yeah most people if they had a good had a even if they even had a setup uh they would they just had like a little webcam for their overhead camera yeah and so we thought for the ppr mm -hmm. we could do you know we would want to have it a little bit better anyway. yeah for the icoria one it was just like a whole bunch of guests and it, and it was it was like one of us with two people and it was all very remote and it was like it broken up into a lot of different chunks and it was weird but then yeah for the remote pprs we had one set up in studio a and one set up in studio c so that we could have individuals that were there at the moon base but separate from one another but then also for the guests we would get the same play mat and send it to them right so that the table looked consistent mm -hmm. right so that we could present what looked like a fairly normal PPR that was still remote web magic, but everything looked sort of like nice and unified, which I, I, th I think turned out fairly well considering, but what a pain. When we were doing the PPRs, we would have the stream, a stream in Studio A and a stream in Studio C mm -hmm. um, with two, you know, an overhead camera in A and an over, overhead camera in C. Um, and so I would go in to the office at like, 7 a.m. and start those get get that set up and start those streams going but the actual uh the actual broadcast would be from my home and so i would go in at like 7 a.m and get that up and running and then leave and then leave before then the the people who were actually playing came in because i didn't want to have you know i don't want to have to interact with them yeah uh i then i go back to my office and then so, and then I'm sort of sitting at home looking at the computer and, you know, I sort of see the person like walk in on the camera that's set up. Uh, and then I can talk to them and, you know, make sure that everything is working still. I always thought you, you ended up with the, one of those, like the, like the goose, the fox and the grain things where it's like, <laughs> okay, I'll bring this to the moon base yeah. and then I'll go home yeah. and then you come over here and then grab the thing and move it to here. And then this person will move. <laughs> well, so we were doing checkpoint. We continued to do checkpoint during the pandemic. Right. And the only way that we were able to do that was it was only ever Kathleen and I, cause we could record it at home on a pop-up green screen, like one yeah, of, a little, a little teeny, one that green goes, that goes like pop. So we could only, we record one of us at a time, yeah. including the intros, yeah. even though we're like on screen at the same time, which was a pain. And at television the, magic at the time we lived in the same building as Beej and Heather, right? Which annoyingly we barely got to like have any sort of like fu fun of like, Hey, we live in the same building as our friends. Cause we got like, six months of that and then then it was the pandemic and so it'd be like okay we record all of this we put the put the footage on a hard drive go in the hallway leave the hard drive in the hallway text heather heather comes in the hallway retrieves the hard drive goes and edits it brings it back i review it and send it online and then we repeat that next week and 
tremendously annoying and we made it look like we were still sitting behind the table and everything and you know then eventually uh we we did um podcasts with like the animated faces right which was the same i guess we did we did uh from rewatch during the pandemic as well we did all the we did the the that whole podcast i mean that was a that was intended for an, as an audio. That was only going to be audio only anyway, because Matt doesn't live in town. And we cut to the credits at the end of the film. Where it says that James Bond will return in the next Ian Fleming thriller, Goldfinger. But it was just sort of like, you know, that's, you know, we, we, we that's a, that's a way to do podcasts so that we can get the best sort of, so it like, it'll sound good because the podcasts over, recorded over like zoom or google calls or whatever right or even discord just like the sound quality was bad unless people were also recording locally and then it was a whole problem there so we we just did them all audio only so that we could get nice clean audio track and eliminate all the cuts and everything so i was like editing all of our and podcasts and then doing them animated this is why we did them that way rather than the, the sort of the zoom call recording and of course you get the um the delay on the you know zoom yeah the the is getting better over time i guess by a little bit but there's still that pause that that sort of awkward pausing that can be just especially you know especially when we're doing uh sort of collaborative stuff you know if you're sort of joking about things or whatever it can be just brutal yeah and so what, what what we did actually for like for tap tap for example is we would have you or james i think listening to the call that we were doing but not necessarily participating everyone was recording we used a service called zencaster for this everybody was recording their own audio locally and you or james was doing the cards right so like as we talked about cards you'd be throwing the card images up on screen in the same way that you do now but then at the end of it ingest to my computer individual audio tracks recorded locally at people's own homes and this silent video file of just there's like an hour long of just changing pictures of magic cards (laughs) so then sync all that up do the like flappy heads that featherweight uh put together of all of the different arts of us uh and then sort of synchronize all of that and it took it took hours to render that stupid thing but we did a bunch of loading bay lives during the pandemic yeah there was some uh, there was some really and- really good stuff there oh. so the so the first bite is just horrendous right you get mostly peel and you're like what have i done the later bites are still pretty bad but but you do get some of the actual orange fruit in there too which is pretty good so uh you know <laughs> that nicole was- do you want this orange and uh, yeah, I think I think we did. Um, I, I, you know, I think we did a pretty good job, uh, kind of uh, embracing some of the you know the 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 limitation of of the remote setup. Yeah. Uh, and using that, you know, by you know we did that we did the we had people submit fly throughs of the moon base. Well, because the first done one, in different video games. The first one we were like, well, how are we going to do? We can't. Do, yeah. can't do the fly through so james and serge were like well we're just going to go off and do we'll it. just we'll just make this in minecraft yeah and they did and it was great we did it in minecraft and animal crossing and then at that point then the viewers were like oh hey i've made it in this game and so yeah. we just ended up with submissions of like oh this is so cool uh and you know we did we did some fun things with like avatar uh overlays mm-hmm. um and with uh all, all sorts of sort of different ways to utilize the remote setup. A small thing that we did that really helped was we encouraged for, for Loading Ready Live, right? It was like, all right, everyone who's on live tonight, we're going to hang out in this Discord call. And then Paul's going to pull people on screen as we need. And we said, uh, if you're not on camera, leave yourself unmuted. And you are encouraged to laugh if someone does something funny. Because god we needed that feedback. oh yeah that that it um, was you know there's yeah after we do a great show alive uh, for me anyway i'm like buzzing a little bit afterwards right and it takes me a while to sort of like settle down in the evening right and it's it's crushing to do a great to do like a great show alive and then be like oh that was awesome everybody all right cool okay cool thanks click and you're just alone in your room <laughs> right it's, it's just like ugh. And uh, not having the feedback of 
one of my favorite recurring things on live is when we someone says something so weird and stupid you can hear Alex laughing the other side of the building, right? Right. And we didn't we never got any of that. And so we we talked about it. We were like, "Hey, can we try this?" and it was so good and just being like, you know, and like You'd occasionally get people in chat being like, oh, to the mics are muted for the other people. And we were like, no, no, this is on purpose. We need this. We desperately need to know that, well, we're, that anything we're doing is working. And it's interesting because it's something that we had to uh, work on because, you know, most you have to actually configure stuff because most mm. voice chat like Discord and, and Zoom and all these different voice chat setups are designed uh, for legitimate reasons so that when you're talking you can't hear other people yeah um for one thing that stops it's for echoing and stuff um and so you talking mutes other people um which in a you know conference call or something isn't a big deal but in the performance area yeah, it can cause some serious uh you know you 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 need to have that you want to have that sort of ambient noise or be able to have that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was it was it was quite a thing. And when everybody is in a remote setup, uh, the uh, the it doesn't really matter whether they're in Victoria or they're somewhere else. And so it did allow us to do some really fun stuff with bringing in friends from other places, friends from the U.S., uh, from uh, England and Australia. Yeah. And, all sorts of different places who you know normally we wouldn't be able to have on a stream that was nice um but uh in the remote setup sort of everybody is equal yeah <laughs> which is kind of a fun thing and and what's cool uh is that we did find certain things for instance jackbox games actually work better in the remote setup in a lot of ways yeah um where everyone can have their own you know, phone or, or computer to do the games and stuff, you know, we can pull in people from wherever we want. Uh, and so we still do Jackbox games remotely, uh, even though we could do it in person if we wanted to. Well, crossing the streams as a whole, that whole stream was, it, it was a thing that we did. Well, we tried to do it weekly when it first started, right? We tried to do it weekly, but honestly, and then it's not honestly it was difficult to get people to to sign up right, right. It was like people were generally not that interested and so we started doing afk and occasionally an episode of afk would get postponed by we would do a crossing the streams instead and it was they would alternate a little bit i'm not entirely sure how that all sort of broke out but then remotely we would do we'd be doing crossing the streams and obviously for like video game stuff uh -oh. no wait no me oh my god oh my god matt, oh my god, matt. matt. no matt matt no yes. please oh, oh, oh no. what it oh no oh, oh no there. oh no <laughs> matt what <laughs> 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 Wow. I hit Corey. Uh, <laughs> you true. did you did hit true. me <laughs> wow and then afk was like remote like tabletop like we would do like the digital version of root or we do something yeah, tabletop we, we would same. try to do something that was sort of sort of tabletop -y. yeah and then when we came back to when we did start to do stuff in person again uh, we were like crossing the streams was great though we should keep doing that and so we did and it's been a everyone's much more keen to be doing multiplayer well, stuff and hang out and some of them some of the crossing the streams are still in person now things like mario party or whatever but you know we now we're not we're not opposed to, now that everyone has these setups the barrier to be like all right everyone let's let's go play Fortnite or let's all get eight people to play jackbox now we can just be like oh yeah sure i can do that i can do that from home yeah no problem Right. Whereas before it was a, there was a much larger barrier to be doing things when we didn't do stuff remotely on that scale. So, no. Yeah. And sort of having that kind of in our in our back pocket as as an option for anything and like for or, or for um, podcasts, you know, often we'll do a podcast for like, say, uh, we'll do a tap tap concede for um, uh, for like we did this for the Magic Fest. Yeah, um, when you, when you go to MagicCon, MagicCon. one thing that 
has, as you mentioned, you know, change, uh, positive changes that have come from this is that, you know, now we have a standing policy in the office. And this isn't just for COVID. This is just for anything is like if you're away at a convention, the kind of place where you're seeing, you know, hundreds, potentially thousands of people, and maybe you're running a booth where people are coming up and excitedly talking right at your face, which is lovely. When you come home, you don't come into the office for a number of days. Right. And that's, again, it's not just for COVID. It's also just, you know, maybe you caught a cold because yeah. those are still out there. Right. Maybe you just picked I mean, up convention crud. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Con crud or, or whatever. Pax, and, Pax pox. Yeah. And so you st- that, that was a thing. We all were just like, yep, you get sick. Yeah. But it's like, maybe we don't have to, maybe do we that. don't have to do that. And so it's, it's, it's been, it's been a, honestly very positive that it's been like, oh yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just, you know, you go to a convention and you, then you just, stay you get you come home and you stay home for a few days and make sure that you're feeling well before you come back into the office and you can still do remote stuff yeah and and if we want to do a tap tap concede yeah uh talking about the convention we can just pull in people remotely and do it that way Mm. one of the other clever ways i think we got around this and this was of course a little later in the pandemic but we would do for loading ready live we did those pre-recorded segments of ask master (laughs) (laughs) this went a lot better in my head (laughs) <laughs> you can pick it up <laughs> and the way that we would set those up is i would go into the office and i'd like set up whatever the task was and then i'd be there filming uh wearing a mask but everyone else would be there they would come through one at a time and it'd be like a f- it'd be again like you said before fully like one person comes in and they do their thing and then they leave and I wipe stuff down and reset it on my own. And then the next person arrives. And so it's like we're limiting exposure, but we're still able to have a pre recorded thing that has like six people in it. <laughs> <laughs> you can pick it up. <laughs> I don't want my hands to get dirty. Ooh. With you there, Serge. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's figuring out ways to. I'm happy that we don't have to do that kind of stuff uh, but it's, now, but, you know, there is an aspect of, like, you know, working, finding creative ways to work within the means that you are obliged to deal with. Yeah, it's nice It's nice to know that it is possible. Yeah. But, yeah, if you don't have to, that is, that, 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 that's better. Yeah. So then summer of 2021 to spring 2022 was sort of the slow trepidatious return to doing stuff in person at the moon base yeah which was sort of complicated by the fact that obviously what we do is not covered under like the various categories that the bc government was sort of talking about yeah when they're like here's your guidelines for these industries we recommend this for these industries we recommend this and we're over in the corner being like hello It's like, well, we're entertainment, but when they talk about entertainment, they're like, you know, filmmaking where you get like a whole ton of people together. Mm -hmm. I should say at no point did we do the thing of like, all right, everyone's got to be back in the office. You know, we've, it's, it's, it's always been to people's personal, personal preferences, but we have had meetings about it where it's like, Hey, what do we think about? this piece of thing is that a thing that we should do in person and everyone's like oh please god yes because it's just some things none of us like doing remotely yeah yeah and uh you know some things just sort of don't don't work in that in that kind of way so that was that was uh nice to sort of slowly kind of move back to that early 2022 we had our first pre -pre pre-release with guests yeah that was Uh, that was so nice marshall and kenji both up from seattle because it's close and they're people that we know, and we know that they'd been handling things well. And so it was just like, hey, friends, let's sort of dip our toes back in the water. You know, you're not traveling from very far. You, you know, yeah. how about, you know, come on up, see how this goes. And uh, that that worked well. That was Streets of New Capenna. Uh, and then then we started being able to be like, okay, yeah, we can, we can actually do, yeah. do stuff again. And there, I mean... There was also there was a point where uh, it was like things were opening up, um, but it still felt pretty important to be you know wearing masks mm-hmm. in in public p- 
public places and doing stuff. Yeah. And I think we pretty early on kind of decided that that it's like we don't we didn't want to do like a stream or 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 a, a you know like AFK or something with like five people sitting around the table all wearing masks. Mm -hmm. um, not only for that everyone's voice would be muffled, it would be kind of weird, um, but it's like in in that context, you know, you're passing cards and everything around. So like, it se it seemed like it would be not an actual benefit. Like it would be sort of a more of a um, just sort of for looks as opposed to actually yeah. doing it doing anything useful. I mean, there was a transitionary period. I guess we sort of glossed over there, where essentially there was just one big bubble that was loading ready run and the people that we live with mm. right where it's like you didn't really go i didn't see my parents for a year right yeah. like you, you didn't go out or see people uh unmasked except for the people you lived with obviously and the people at loading ready run uh so that we could have a high confidence in that we're all gonna stay stay well and be able to to do to to do stuff like that without having to also be like sitting around playing board games all wearing masks uh together and yeah. and uh you know obviously things have transitioned now and it's it's different and whatever and i'm not going to go into anyone's now personal we just, preferences but now we just openly spit in each other's faces it's it's all oh yeah, yeah no, whatever miss the mouth spitting yeah yeah so i mean ultimately with all the stuff all the changes and things you know i would have preferred that none of it had happened but since it did happen, I think we came away with it with a bunch of great learning and processes and technologies and improvements and stuff that allow us now to be even more flexible and do even cooler stuff than we could before that we would never have done if we hadn't been yeah. effing forced to. <laughs> so, you know, that sucked but we learned a lot of good stuff from it. Eh? Yeah. It's a silver lining, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Still would have rather that none of that happened. Speaking <laughs> of things you'd rather not have happened. Speaking happen. of things I would rather not have had happen. Uh, I mean, I gave you the whole sort of story about, about it uh, in that uh, Loading Ready Live cold open. But the best announcement I hear all night, I promise you this is a direct quote. I wrote it down immediately, including the pause between activating the PA and speaking was... Can we get Karen into isolation, please? So many questions, no answers. Yeah, woke up one morning and my, and my back hurt. And that's not atypical for people of our age. Like, oh, I guess I slept funny. But then it kept hurting. So I went to the physio and the physio was like, oh, do these stretches. And I did the stretches and then it started to get better. And then it started to get worse. And then I started also like itching all over. And then I... It, Thanks. Shout outs to Kathleen for being like, I'm taking you to the emergency room. And uh, did I, I don't know if I told you this, this part about it. Cause I don't think it, I don't think I mentioned it in the, in, in the thing, but like, cause they do triage when you come to the ER, right. And they're like, you know, your arm is missing and you're bleeding everywhere. You go right in, right. you know, you're less critical. So you go over there. Right. Right. And my thing was my back hurts. Right. So they're like, all right. It's pretty low priority. Yeah. Sit in that deeply uncomfortable chair for eight hours. Right. Yeah. It's like, okay, sure. Finally get through to see, to see someone. And she's like, I'm not giving you painkillers. What is oxy something? Oxycontin? Is it Oxycontin? No, it was, um, I don't know. The, the powerful one that there's, that just people are abusing around around in this region anyway so she's like i'm not giving you this and i'm like i don't want it i want to know what's wrong with me and then she's like oh okay let's try to find out what's wrong with you and she's like well it could be that you've been sitting in an uncomfortable chair for eight hours <laughs> yeah that's gonna and, mess up your back yeah and so she was like yeah I, I mean i don't know does it hurt when you do this like no yes maybe you know, this is fine whatever she's like okay i don't know and, you know like blood test i guess so i go get a blood test and she's like come back to the er tomorrow morning we're gonna do a ct scan and i'm like oh that's weird 
according to this, you died. Yeah, you know, two hours like, ago. Oh, okay. I wonder if it's because like Beach had like done his back in. He'd done something. He'd had like mm-hmm. he like twisted funny and bulged a disc, and it was like poking, and he couldn't like stand up for a little while. He's fine now. Uh, you know, and I was like, oh, geez, he needs a CT scan. Maybe I have like a bulging disc or something or whatever. And then went back in the whole thing and and. Uh, it's just miserable. Anyway, you, you, I'm sure that you're, if you're watching this, if you're nine episodes deep into, ten episodes deep into this podcast, you know by now that I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is cancer. And that was no fun for anybody. Um, obviously, we knew, and then I told, like Kathleen and I knew, obviously, and I told a couple close people, and then told everyone internally loading ready run and then later said that publicly once we sort of figured out the plan right it was like well yeah we should tell people something because a graham's not going to be on as much content c probably going to lo- b b probably going to lose his hair it's going his or letter orders are going to be completely messed <laughs> yeah completely and so uh uh you know should should tell people and so that's why i did the sort of the stand-up style monologue i swear i'm in the middle of asking them a question when i black out and then i remember a three second long dream of being asked to arrange duplo bricks in my mouth and i wake up two hours later with a tiny little plastic tube running up my nose through my sinuses down the back of my throat past my stomach and into my intestines over the next several days i get drip fed a beige soup that's essentially just a boost meal replacement milkshake but medical this time in which i actually i was gonna um, say you had a lot yeah had a lot of time to work on yeah that one, you know, it's funny because um, that would have been after, if I'm recalling correctly, that was right after my second chemo treatment. Because I had my first chemo treatment uh, in the hospital. The beige sl- slurm has been going for uh, four hours. So now the other big bag like flushes the line clear. You can see my feed line is clear now. But because normally the soup is moving through at a rate of 85 milliliters an hour. And this stuff moves through at a rate of 75 milliliters in like a minute. It moves so fast, it feels cold. So I can feel it down my nose and down my throat. And it's like, it's just, it's a very odd feeling. I will not miss this. And then I was, they, part of the thing is that they give you steroids, right? Uh, And the the next day my body was just like the 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 sort of the 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 downer part of it had dissipated but my body was still like roids and so i had probably the most productive <laughs> creative day i've had in ages i did i did the logos for loading ready run vg and loading ready run tabletop uh, like the YouTube channel logo because we'd been talking about it for a while and I was like great okay if we're gonna do the channel split we need all of this stuff and I like prepped all the graphics for it and I did like all the planning of like what shows were gonna go where and I was like great here here everybody I've done all that and now I'm going to bed <laughs> well I mean <laughs> saying like you know you you were having a lot of trouble with your with your back yeah and it was like affecting you being able to eat mm-hmm. and all sorts of stuff for like a quite a long time. And like, like I remember, I, I remember like you, there, there was like a number of filming sessions that you were directing, like, but you, from a chair, like you had to sit down yeah. while you were directing the thing. Cause yeah. you, cause it was, and you were having so much trouble with it. We were talking about bringing back Commodore Hustle and we had an outline for it. And I was like, right, I just got to write this script. And I just couldn't focus. Like there was so much brain fog. I just, and, and I was tired all the time. And I was like, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to push so, it another month. I haven't finished the script yet. So it was, it was weird in that like, you're the only one I know who seemed to get better when you started taking chemo. Like usually people go to go to the, you know, they get the diagnosis of cancer, they start taking chemo and then they really go, yeah off the uh you know that they they have you know chemo really messes them up but uh as well as obviously you know getting rid of the cancer you actually 
I don't know what you were like, you, how, how you felt, but it seemed like you were actually feeling better than you were, you know, before you had gotten oh, diagnosed. Yeah. Well, because it was, I mean, I, so I, I talked about this in the in the in that thing, but as a reminder, part of the problem was that the physically the lymphoma was like squeezing the my small intestines, so I couldn't eat as much. I had lost a lot of weight, mm. right, and I didn't even sort of realize it because you don't process necessarily if you look at a before and after photo that are months apart you can be like oh okay but yeah, in the yeah. moment you don't really sort of realize that you're losing weight and after i got the chemo and i could eat again and my back didn't hurt and my liver wasn't sending weird enzymes all over my body i was like oh <laughs> oh this is great i feel like a superman oh holy crap yeah this is awesome and so that that was the first that was the day after the first chemo session mm. And then I think I did that live bit the day after the second chemo session. And we weren't sure that I'd be able to do it live. So I did actually, I found it the other day, I did actually record that whole bit. But don't worry, there is still a full, normal episode of Loading Ready Live to follow after this. But first, it's uh, me and my fantastic voyage right. to, to camera at home. Uh in case we had to pre-record it and then i was like no no i think I, I did it before the chemo and then did the chemo and then we were like no no i think i can do this now over the course of it <laughs> it did it did decline like the yeah. after the first one i was like Ugh! and then you know by like the fourth because i did seven seven full uh treatments around about the fourth i was like okay i'm just sort of feeling pretty normal and the fifth i'd be like i'm just sleeping all day and the sixth and seventh just destroyed me i was the day after those those chemo treatments i was just wrecked right and so because it's you, yeah. they're poisoning your body over the course of many months but yeah those first couple ones i was just like oh there's like quite literally a weight has been lifted off me you know i've been like struggling to go and i can't but i can't eat and i'm tired my back hurts my liver's messed up and suddenly i'm like oh oh it's literally like i've taken a weighted vest off and i'm just like yes let's do this and then of course to actually make that stick they've got to keep poisoning you but um so you know you know thank goodness for for modern medicine that, oh my gosh that uh you um continue to be uh in whatever <laughs> i don't know what you call it in remission no completely in are you still at, am i just in remission forever now or have i have i have i remissed i don't know well, I don't whatever, know either. Whatever the case is, uh, it seems to be all yeah. sorted I, out. I got to ring the bell. It is October 13th, 2022. It is the 19th anniversary of Loading Ready Run, and it is my final chemo treatment. <laughs> Oh, that, nice. That was after the last chemo treatment. I said, I said to the assembled nurses, I was like, you've all been great. Thank you so much for all of your help. You, every one of you has been tremendously wonderful. I hope I never see you again. <laughs> and they were just like, yeah, <laughs> us too. That's, that's the same thing I said to, uh, back about 10 years ago when, uh, I had bed bugs and the guy, the, the exterminator came and had to spray for all of them and stuff. Like, thank you very much. I hope I never see you again. Yeah. 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 Is that why we did? We did, we did a sketch about bed bugs. Was that because of that? Yeah. 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 Who are you, filthy blood bag interloper, to say where the bed bug people can and cannot live? My ancestors roamed these lands from sunrise to suns. Whoa. Those guys really get into your head. It came from a real place of pain. <laughs> real place of pain. That was a <laughs> great costume in that, in that video, though. <laughs> so, yeah, it's unfortunately, you know, it's like we we were gearing up to do like Friday nights. And I, I mentioned last episode that it's like if it hadn't been for the pandemic, we might have even done like a road quest or something. And then it was like just as we're really in the midst of starting to get back into doing stuff in person, then I'm just like. And of course, that, you know, being uh, immunocompromised as well. I mean, meant that, you know, you had to be even more careful about, uh, yeah. you know, visitors to the moon base. Yeah. So it was stuff. like, you know, we, I was like, look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taking it easy. I'm not going to be really pushing myself. Uh, I probably still did more work than I should have, but I, you know, I didn't like, I 
I, I wasn't in the office every single day, but I was like, but I will be in the office occasionally. So if you're even a little bit sick, no, <laughs> you, you stay home. And then of course, for the pre pre releases, because it's like, Hey, let's bring three people in from out of the, from out of the country. Um, generally out of the country. Some of them were from Canada, but it's like, all right, I can't be part of this. I got to stay home. But Kathleen does, we can't take both of us out of this. So for that period of time, it's like Kathleen goes and stays with a friend for, you know, a week so that she can come in and do the, all the video and the actual pre pre release day. And so I'm at home mercifully with my parents living very close. And so we're taking after, or they and I are taking care of Penelope and stuff during, during that sort of like the PPR week. Uh, the only upside is I get to just watch the PPR and be like, Hey, this is nice. I got, I gotta say, <laughs> They're great fun to watch. <laughs> it's awesome. It's the it's 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 a weird feeling when I have had no involvement in mm. like even in the pre recorded stuff, right? Like I think I was reviewing some of the some of the pre recorded things, but like, you know, I'm not involved. I've never met the guests, right? And I'm just like This is nice. Look at look at look at what we're doing. Oh, this is great. So that was that was cool. The Unfinity PPR was supposed to have been my first one back, which I was really excited about because, of course, Kathleen and Cameron and I worked on the creative text. And then they added another chemotherapy treatment. Right. Not because anything was going badly. If you're, if you're interested, they did one in the hospital that was different from the kind of chemo that is usually recommended for what I had. They gave me a different one because the recommended one filters through the liver and my liver had been so badly impacted by the cancer. They were like, we're going to give your liver a break. So we're going to give you a different kind of chemo first. And then we'll do the other five treatments of the, the proper kind. But then partway through that, they were like, well, but it's supposed to be six of this kind. So we'll give you six of this kind, meaning mm -hmm. you get a seventh one total that I like wasn't expecting, which... You get six. It was not great you get <laughs> mentally. Six, you get six and the seventh is free. It basically, it's basically what happened. And so the uh, uh, I wasn't able to make that one. But man, watching from home when Mark cast Enter the Dungeon oh. <laughs> in the first match of the day. And ever because he'd talk to all of you. He, yeah. Obviously, it was a surprise to Kathleen, but he'd talk to all of you. And so watching him cast that and then just seeing everyone snap into action in the entire tabletop lifts away and is removed. The top down camera can see the floor. The ca cameras come off the tripods like there was a whole plan for this. And I was just like, God, this is so effing good. <laughs> this is great television. It was it was hilarious to watch it was one, one of my top ppr moments turns out the unsets do a lot of really good make for really really good television yeah um whether they're good magic or not who knows but <laughs> i don't care it's up to yeah yeah but uh certainly entertaining yeah so then ultimately yeah i got the go ahead that uh everything had worked fine and that my blood tests were clear and all that during desert bus Mm. So I'm not going to take a lot of time to, to, to belabor this point. I have no more lymphoma, and there is no indication that it should return. And I am very, very excited about it. <laughs> and I can drink again. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Yeah! I'm going to use my one for the end. Fuck yeah! yeah. <laughs> Which was fun. I had originally thought it was going to be beforehand, but no, it was <laughs> on the Monday of desert bus this year which meant i got to make a public hey i'm all right thing mm. but uh you know while fielding off uh comments from chad about how i how i look like a slightly younger jerry holkins which i don't know how jerry's supposed to feel about that but mm. very happy to have that in the rear view and uh, in it where it should stay according to whatever we've whatever you know we've done like checkups since then and it, you know we we should be clear of that and i hope if you're looking at like statistics of like how many people this should affect i hope that that's the that's the one for for loading ready run and i hope that no one else here has to directly deal with deal with cancer because it was no fun for anybody i didn't get that i didn't Did get try again? <laughs> no 
<laughs> I would rather not try it again, Siri, if that's all the same with you. I was able to basically be like, all right, I'm back. Now, what other big project are we going to work on? Oh, moving. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's so much room for activities. Woo! We, uh, we talked a bit about this being moved out of Delta into Mark V in a course of weeks. Yeah. Uh, this was much more our decision. The lease had come up during the pandemic and we ended up there for, I think over a year after the, our initial sort of five year lease. And we liked Mark five actually more than I thought we would considering how frantically we had to move in there. But there were some, some parts that were not great. It was near a bunch of restaurants. And so, you know, they were aggressively exterminating stuff, but it just meant that the mice ran into our unit. Yeah. So um, you, was, you'd be there like by yourself and you just. Yeah. Through the, through the drop ceiling or one, one of them came in while we were streaming into studio C and did the, like, did the Abe Simpson, like it ran right into the room. It was like, Whoa, ran back out again. Too and, many people. And we were all just, I don't know what stream it was. You, you wouldn't be able to find it, but we were, we, we were just like, not going to mention that on camera, you know, just like none of us saw that. No one on, no one at home saw it. We don't need to talk about it. And it's just, you know, our landlord was not necessarily, you know, an a-hole like the previous one, but was just not really responsive, which uh, was frustrating. And so we decided let's start looking. Yeah. And, uh, it turns out that like our requirements were pretty difficult to to thing you know we had we it's had a recurring theme we're, we had, we're weird and strange well we had we had specific requirements especially like in terms of space and then and also in terms of location hmm. um you know both graham neither graham or i drive mm -hmm. uh and a few of the other uh loading way run folks don't either um and so we wanted to you know we wanted to make sure it was in a relatively central location good transit like, good transit and all, all this kind of thing um, so yeah, once we went through all the, um, requirements, uh, there really wasn't that many options, um, except for this place, but it was not, uh, in its current state suitable for our purposes. So, yeah, this is the, here's the, the timeline lease at Mark five was up in August of 2022. So back in January of that year. James had started working with a leasing agent to find a new space. We toured this location for the first time in May 2022. Mm. So that would have been like just before I went to hospital, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we went through initial design and approval in the fall. And by the end of that year, we'd signed the lease. January, February of this year, 2023, we got our contractor and went through final designs and permits and everything. And then we like broke ground in air quotes on, on March 6th, which is when we started doing demolition. Cause basically every wall in here, but three, I think we knocked down. Yeah. We basically, you know, turned it into an empty room, a giant empty space and then rebuilt all the walls. Yeah. And then we moved in at June on June 24th making Mark fifth, the longest serving moon base by three weeks over moon base Mark three. Really? Yeah. Wow. By three weeks. Just barely. And then uh, we fought with TELUS until our internet was installed. So now, to our knowledge, we had a line from the server room to the panel and a line from the panel to the street that just needed the ends to touch. But nobody arrived to touch the ends. So we called again, suffered through the smooth jazz of the hold music, occasionally punctuated by a public service announcement that together we can end bullying. <laughs> and <laughs> we were finally... <laughs> this is probably wrong because I'm cyberbullying TELUS right now. And now it's yeah. much nicer in here. <laughs> yeah, and if you want to... Yeah, you can hear the whole TELUS story also in a podcast, also in a Loading Ready Live uh, uh, intro yeah. rant by Graham. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, it's nice. I like it in here. We have a ductless air conditioning unit in this room, which uh, makes it nice and cool. Great. 
because before you have all the ducks and the quack 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 quack. Yeah, I know you you won't have heard them because we laboriously remove them on camp. We actually have a an anti duck filter that we run it, on things. It's pretty common actually. It's called ducking. Yeah, yeah. It's a, you, look at audio ducking. It's a yeah, real thing. It's a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna t- we're going to go now to uh, a chat with Nelson and Matt. Matt will have dealt with audio ducks many times. So, yeah, let's see what Nelson and Matt have going on. It's fine. We can talk as long as we want. Matt's the one that has to edit it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this part of the podcast. <laughs> Graham and Paul here again, now joined by Nelson. Hey, I'm here now. And Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're going to talk about Nelson and Matt, I guess. What perfect people to have here for that subject. Did you just like roll up a car window? What was that? Well, Are you like angry. very slowly high-fiving a cat with it, a paw? It's like, yeah, right? Uh, okay, okay. No, um, I, that's just like one of the first things I did when I was being introduced on like an AFK or something is like, woo, and I've just been leaning <laughs> nice. into it. Okay, good. You quickly grasped the important thing is whatever the first thing you do is, that's people are like, you're the woo, slow woo guy. Just to keep repeating it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Recently on a Jackbox stream, the Discord audio floor was clipping the sound because the gate, it wasn't yeah. loud enough because it was just a woo. So it was just like you going. <laughs> and it was like, okay, I guess that's sure. That's a choice. <laughs> beep, boop, bloop, boop, beep, boop, bloop, beep, boop. The fact that you intentionally don't make noise, Matt, on your intro thing, unless you are muted. <laughs> Catches no, me off guard I, I every intentionally time. Oh, made noise. <laughs> oh, no, He's didn't. doing it at a frequency only dogs can hear. Yeah, I, d- I didn't realize initially that you were meant to actually be making a noise. So, Matt. Woo! Yeah, everyone's got their own little sort of introductory thing. Uh, you know, Wheeler, of course. Uh, thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Ian, mm-hmm, has, mm-hmm. it's your boy. I, I'm a big fan of Kathleen's, ah, which is a good one. What's, what's yours again, Nelson? And Nelson's here. Yes. Yes, I am. No, I, I haven't awesome really uh, settled. I think Neither have I. I think I'm, I went with I'm, I'm here too for a solid year. Yeah. Mm. I'm generally doing the intros, so I don't have to think about this mercifully. I might rotate into present. Mm. Mm. That's a good one. Mm. I like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Heard, chef. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, yeah, this is, uh, at least at current planning... The yeah. final episode of yep. this podcast. I can't imagine. We'll start going into the future otherwise. Yeah, that'll be weird. Which it sounds dangerous. That sounds similar to perhaps the first sketch that the very you guys first did. video. Oh, yeah, yeah, the brief history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you two have been around for for years. quite a few years. Now, yeah, but still represent. I don't know the new kids on the block. We're baby somehow. Uh, somehow. In in at least in in loading ready run crew terms, and yet. Let's start with Nelson. You were in some of the earliest episodes of Friday Nights. Yeah, I think I'm on Friday Nights episode number two, which I want to say we filmed in 2013. Jeez. So, and yeah. it probably was in the first half of the year. So, baby is. You, you, yeah, I know, right? Because I well, end up, you know, initially, 11th birthday. Initially in Friday Nights, we had, I think, one, maybe only one. Possibly two scenes with Ed, who actually owns Yellow Jacket. He's just actually the guy that owns Yellow Jacket. And Dan was in a couple, who works there, was in a couple of things. And we sort of, like, I don't know, we think Ed's very funny, but maybe it doesn't play off as well on camera as we would like. And so we sort of, in the first couple episodes, were kind of like, uh, we'll have Dan be the guy who, like, works at Yellow Jacket. But then that quite quickly developed into a, a like solid recurring role as like no no nelson is the the guy at yellow jacket to the point that you would have people come in and be like you so you own yellow jacket and you're like hold on <laughs> yeah i had to answer some questions in chat wait you actually work at yellow jacket oh wow i appreciate your revisionist history of that event but i'd like to give it to the viewers straight please what really happened was loading ready run came into yellow jacket asked politely if they could film Ed agreed, cut like 
possibly still the most hilarious line in the entire series with just like getting told that he doesn't get to sell his imaginary box of p3k um <laughs> and then and then on the second episode dan and ed i think were asked if they wanted to do it again and we're like we're busy <laughs> or like pass and i was there that day and so you or or james maybe was like okay well do you want to be in it read the script and i'm like have like a bit of a theater background or whatever and i'm like yeah i'd love to I, sounds super fun yep <laughs> All right, fair enough. Definitely, definitely mm-hmm. misremembering that. To be clear, they don't have like a secret safe in the back where the good cards live, nor have they ever had an entire booster box of Portal Three Kingdoms that I am aware of. We wish, despite Which, again repeatedly having people come into the store yeah. and ask if if these, these things are true. We yeah, Friday Nights is not an accurate portrayal of any of <laughs> it's, the it's, of of Yellow Jacket of any of the people. Yeah, of they, the game of magic in a lot of cases. <laughs> yeah, real life Nelson is not nearly as sick of our crap as Friday Night's Nelson. Morning, Nelson. What you pick here? This pack has an Eternal Skylord, a Leyline Prowler, and an Ashiok. Graham, it's 9.57. Yeah, thankfully I have as long as I want to pick, right? I will answer your question in three minutes. Only mostly sick of our crap. Yeah, because yeah, like... <laughs> I feel like the the yeah the 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 Friday Nights Nelson character because of course we always have me the Paul Paul who's actually Paul hi Paul and then there's you know Commodore Hustle Paul and Friday Nights Paul and yeah. Bloody Bob which are not obviously the same as you are in real life but mm-hmm. I feel like the Friday Nights Nelson like you start off as basically just being like a foil like we needed somebody to ask for cards when we were at Yellow Jacket and then. You know, we quickly got into the, it was like actually making, actually making you a sort of a character on the show and having your own thoughts and feelings <laughs> about the what was going on. Usually that we were being stupid because usually we were. Yeah, because it's comedy. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think my favorite of that being a day in the. A day in the the yellow jacket or whatever. What was the episode? It was a day in the YJ. You called, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That was a real treat. Thanks for that. Yeah, that that was that was a super fun episode. I love it. It was sort of like, you know, we like paced it real slow. There was a lot of references to like anime and Japanese cinema with Mm. like the specifically. There's like a shot of one of the one of like the the like the fan and the 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 thopter the the paper craft yes. thopter from kaladesh with cicada noises in the background <laughs> yeah it's very slight, slight cardboard slight. mobiles that you can find at an lgs because they got them as yeah. part of the promotional package yeah being slowly turned by electric rotating fans yeah now i should say because i don't actually think we because you were you were talking about ed and dan were there and then we asked them and they said no and then you were you were around and we asked you to do it you you did at the time actually work there Oh yeah, and I worked there for like most of the run of Friday nights. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the run of Friday nights so far. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, uh-huh. uh, yeah. I kept working at Yellow Jacket from uh, I started just before Morning Tide. I want to say I worked the wow. like Morning Tide pre-release as like a staffer, uh, and then until March 2020. <laughs> mm, yeah. Weird how that works out. And and was that like whatever the second episode of Friday nights? The first thing Nelson was in. No, actually. Oh. Do you recall your first on-screen appearance for Loading Ready Run? I thought it was that. <laughs> um, so it's kind of funny. We may okay. have been filming you without your knowledge. No. Oh, oh no. good. Oh, good. We had his. We had his knowledge for this. Okay. There was a video where we needed a. I'll just tell you. It's called. It's a sketch called the Crazy One, and it is about people auditioning to be the crazy one right. on a reality TV show. You know that show Jackass? I will do Jackass. I'll staple things to myself like plants and things. Okay. And so at the end of the sketch, we needed a montage of all the guys in the show, all the people who made it onto the show. And we were like, where are we going to get like... We just need a whole bunch of people. Footage of eight to ten people that are not typically in the crew where are we going to do this oh i know we're all going to this pre-release event at this hotel or something oh nice and so the whole rest of the the this montage is like you uh saul is in it um allison in earlier days uh like basically anyone who was a yj regular 
I don't think Wheeler's in it, but anyone mm. who was a YJ regular that we were on, like, not necessarily first name basis, but like nodding, you know, like, oh, hey, you know, people that we recognized from being around yeah. Yellow Jacket and stuff, you know, we were like, hey, can, can we just take a shot of you? And so there's a, there's, there's one shot of you being like, Ugh. Like that, and that's the <laughs> I'm the grumpy one or something. I cannot remember the proto Nelson that work that works at YJ Friday Night's uh, character. Yeah, right? yeah not yeah. ground down from years of uh, customer service, <laughs> but already grumpy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can't remember. It's just I remember is the sketch that ended with like, uh, as I'm I'm the tiger guy, because your character in the video, right earlier to Kathleen is like, you need a tiger. I got a tiger guy. Yeah, you know, and then How one of the, somehow the tiger guy makes it. So there's like just me in a high vis vest pulling on a rope, being like, "Hi," <laughs> from off camera. It's a weird video. This is like eight years too early to be tiger stuff. Yeah, yeah, so, right. Yeah. Oh wow. Speaking of March 2020. Yeah. So at this point, <laughs> uh, I'm always fascinated to hear about like, oh, especially sort of, you know, the sort of outside view. Like, what was your impression of? Loading ready, run. like I guess your mo most of your interface was us just like barging into YJ with like all our camera equipment every couple weeks. Well, <laughs> no, for a while before that, you guys would barge into the into the F and M, and like that was always a welcome sight because but that would to actually play in the F and M. Yeah, yeah, not to actually record, play not magic. To video stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got You're to paying customers. <laughs> I yeah, I got to know you the same way I got to know most of the other customers at F and M at Yellow Jacket, which is that you would like trundle in at four fifty nine hoping to play in a five PM event like <laughs> like thirty other people did and you would meet me while I was like frantically getting your DCI numbers and your like payment and trying to make sure that you knew that the event was standard and like that you couldn't play, you know, your Taiga or whatever. Um whatever the situation was. Like I think probably we kept we kept loading ready run ready run or like some members around in that scene for like one rotation like rotation hit and there was like maybe a Friday nights about it by the time that like the first kind of decks that the crew had built uh, after coming home from PAX or whatever mm -hmm. and then it was like once we couldn't play them anymore I was like okay what are we gonna do and like we a bunch of us became limited players right like from yep. the crew mm -hmm. but yeah certainly for a little while there you were constructed regulars and like you know portal into the scene i eventually got tired of paying five bucks to get my ass kicked so <laughs> i stopped doing standard no judgments because well i didn't i i i don't know if this was a conscious thing or you can go to the alley behind the place and get that done for free yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. yeah no i didn't know if this was like uh if i was had some sort of high horse about net decking i can't remember if i did i don't care now certainly i don't know if this was why at the time but i like didn't and so i definitely remember showing up with like my terra stomper mono green deck or whatever and then sitting down against john rickard being like okay jace bounce it bounce it bounce it and i'm like oh wait this is miserable because mm -hmm. <laughs> i just wasn't playing it was a powerful standard and i wasn't i wasn't in the meta yeah so yeah. i will give you a nod though like every time the loading ray run crew would like roll in on the on the YJF and I was like, oh, there's like four to six, maybe it's eight more players tonight that aren't going to be like definitely taking up a bunch of my time with some sort of social issue. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to play magic and have fun and act like adults. It's going to be great. I do, I do remember after we made the It's Magic episode of Commodore Hustle, which again ended up unintentionally being the backdoor pilot for Friday nights. This is the one where... Alex, and we talked about this earlier in a previous episode of this, of this series, but yeah, the, the, the one where Alex does like the sleight of hand. And I think it was you. I'm, I I want to say that it was you who like briefly caught one of our ears and was when you didn't know us that well. And we're like, hey, that was really cool. I like that a lot. Do we need to keep an eye on Alex? <laughs> like, is, is he going to actually do sleight of hand like in a game? I, 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 I want to say that was you. I, it, it was someone who worked at YJ. Might have been Allison. Yeah, it might have been me. I don't know. It might have been Dan. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't remember taking you aside to ask that question. But like, yeah, it might have been me. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, no, no, no. He would never. Okay. God, no. Also, that, I think that worked out very difficult to do actually in a game without being really obvious. I mean, there have been people caught doing I think card People caught yeah. cheating, but like. People doing sort of not like super high end card manipulation, but yeah. definitely card manipulation. Mm. Yeah, it's a thing. Yeah. yeah. Some judges like take, um, there's another judge on the island actually who spent like a considerable amount of time not necessarily perfecting the card manipulation tricks to the point where uh, he can like 
you know, do it as a side gig, but like just understanding it enough so that he knows like where to watch for like the oh. errors and also like what kind of the hands posture, like to all these things, the technique. Mm. You must yeah, exactly. the enemy. Yeah. Well, and it's good, you know, it's helpful, although it's not within the scope of what's required to be a judge. No, God, uh, no. But it's, it's helpful, you know, if you're doing, you know, trying to catch cheats, like to know what all the tools are at the back, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So. Obviously, Friday nights is where it began, but the osmosis of absorbing you mm. into doing more stuff was probably through Tap Tap. Did you appear on any early episodes of Tap Tap? Yeah. Okay. So the rest of my loading ready life continues uh, from the early episodes of like seeing you guys kind of once a month ish at YJ for some part of Friday nights, uh, doing those regularly into. I think I had like one appearance on uh, Tap Tap or or something else. I think there might have been like a maybe a one off event the, on the paper fight. Maybe maybe I can't remember if I was on an early paper fight before I was regularly because I I definitely showed up and did like at least one thing that I believe was work in I want to say Moonbase Mark three. Like I showed up for James's birthday and played Modern Masters Draft, but I think I was also there one other time to be like, okay, we're doing this filming. Did you yeah. did you come in on some of the uh, feed dumps? No, I don't think I've ever done a feed dump. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Ah, so here we are. Okay. Um, oh, we're, we're just putting up the, the wiki. I, nice. Yo, it wouldn't be Sweet. the first time. Sweet. We would have had you involved in the pre pre release for Kaladesh. Really. Okay. September 18th, 2016. Okay, is that was that the first time that Serge got a break during one of those? Yeah. Yeah, so. we, we we when when Serge was on, we talked about how like the first one or two pre-releases, pre-pre-releases uh you, we, the the amount of uh pressure on Serge uh as like sole judge we didn't even have like chat judges at that point. Right. Uh yeah. was uh, we, you know, Obviously, we we quickly figured out that there was changes that need to be made with that. Yeah, so right. Okay. Needed to bring in more people. So that would have been Moonbase Four, probably right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And who did we have as guests for Kaladesh? Was it I Christine? Because I can remember meeting Christine Sprankle in Moonbase Mark Four, and maybe that was the pre pre release. That... I can tell you right now it was. Uh, no, no. This is the. This is the infamous Blake Rasmussen two and a half oh, hour game. Yes, I do uh, remember that. It was Maria and Megan and nice. Blake and Stibbs. God, we had so many guests back in the day. Incredible. For that one. Yeah. Okay, so I'm brought in s sort of seasonally mm -hmm. to help with these pre pre releases. I don't know if I have missed any since then. Maybe one because I've been on vacation or whatever, but um, it's been you pretty know, consistent. Serge, Serge was pretty happy to have help, I think. So <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. like back in regularly to judge those and then the next kind of important kind of osmos i don't know what a unit of osmosis is anyways the next sort of uh move was you and i just i don't even know if we planned it we might have planned it once or twice but like we also just ended up at the indoor play space at hudson market with our kids at the same time oh, regularly yeah. right, right, right. and like one of the times that we were hanging out doing that you were like hey do you want to be on a podcast every week? Because I think I had come on to TTC as like the expert or something, or like the person with an opinion or whatever. You've been on like six. I was, I, right. You know, I'm looking this up. I had been on like kind of regularly, but not every week. Like I had been We had on you on three episodes okay. in 2018 about uh, selecting our own picks for if we had made Masters 25. Right. Yes. That, that was fun. Yeah. So like that, the Dominaria nicknames, an episode on Muldrotha Brawl and a crack a pack extravaganza. We built a deck. That was Those fun. Those are the yeah. only six episodes of Tap Tap I've got you on here, according to the wiki at time of recording. So then that would have been North 100 I was asking about, right? No. No, no, no. no. It was Tap Tap. Because okay. I, yeah, I didn't show up on North 100 until, was it last year? Right. I think it was before this year. So yeah. when did you, I guess, I guess these are, I guess these are just like the early episodes before you actually Joined, guest joined stars, yeah, tab right. Tab. These were the, these, these must just be the guest star episodes. Yeah, once once I was sort of like quasi permanent host on TTC, I think was 2019, mm -hmm. either that year or 2018. Um, Y'all invited me to do a regular writing meeting with like 
it was just kind of open. Like there were a bunch mm-hmm. of people who would be there. Yeah. Like Kathleen was always there. You were often there. Uh, Cameron was often there. And it was to write either crap shots or Friday night or Friday nights or Comedy whatever Hustle. else was coming up. I, yeah. yeah. I know there was there was uh definitely for Friday nights, you know, it would the the structure would often be, you know, Graham and or Kathleen would, you know, write a sort of a, a general idea for it, but there'd be sort of slots for it's like okay we need a funny joke with a card here yeah. let's get all the magic like the the hardcore uh magic knowledge people together to right. fill in what that slot yeah, oh, we, right very often yeah the process for writing a friday nights would be the the group that group meeting that you mentioned right like what about an episode where this sort of thing happens and here's a couple funny ideas but it's not a great environment to like really hammer out a like 15 minute script mm. so it's like we we would take those notes away and then do a script. But yeah, frequently come back and be like, look, we need a board state that makes this joke make sense. Before I started regularly coming to the writing meetings, there was a half step in between that where Kathleen would just take me out for beers and nachos and then like <laughs> explain to me how far she had come with her idea for a joke. Right. And then like ask me for like a set of circumstances that would make the joke work in a real game. And I would usually be willing to give her like five or 10. And then all, well, Jeremy white came to one of these as well. And like, there might've been another one where Rickard was there or someone else from the scene, but it would just be like, Hey, can I like g- show up at yellow jacket at the end of your shift? And then like buy you dinner and I'll like you pick your brain so that mm. my script makes sense. And like, I won't be eviscerated in the YouTube comments or yep. whatever. Right. You were paid so. in beer to write. Yeah. Weird, right? Yeah, bizarre. To know about magic, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, Kathleen did all the actual writing. I was allowed to just talk. It was cool. Um, so that that's another little half step that I was pulled into the crew. There was a year there where we sort of did like almost a, a whole second sub-season of Friday Nights with the Theros, Theros the yeah. Hero's Path. Right. And you're in nearly all of those. Yeah. So that must have just been a lot of intense Nelson happenings all at once. Yeah, no, for sure. That And that was kind of close to the beginning, right? Because what was Theros 2013 or 2014? Like, I, th- I feel like Theros, the extra season of Friday Nights was like... That was fairly sec- early, I It was think, like the yeah. second season of Friday Nights had two seasons or something, right? Yeah, the Hero's Path. Yeah, Hero's Path was Nine 2014. Episode 2014, 2013, okay. 2014. Right, yeah. 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 So 20, yeah, 2013 is kind of when I think of it starting. And There was nine of them and you're in eight of them, so yeah. Right. And so because, because there the, were some months its, that had two episodes of Friday nights. Yeah. Yeah. By its nature, that whole season was sort of like Kathleen going on the hero's journey. And so a lot of it involved playing, like doing stuff at YJ. And so you did a lot of sort of not the, not like the antagonist, but you were sort of like, cause the, you, you could go into the store and play those like one player decks, like the Minotaurs or the Hydra and things. Yeah. And so you were sort of like the analog for, you know, you'd set that up and give her the feedback and stuff. Yeah, those heroes path battles or whatever are meant to be. You can just play them solo, right? Like yeah. you can just be by yourself and then like flipping the opponent's cards. But it's a more fun sketch if like the two of you are playing arch enemy against me and I'm flipping the the cards. So, mm-hmm. um, so we kind of ad lib that, and yeah. that was a lot of fun too. I got to put my my fingers next to my head and try to make myself click a minotaur. Good game, Kathleen. A scene that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Like I thought that looked pretty good. It was a good mm. nice. So yeah, back to like late teens. Yeah, I was like, hey, you want to yeah. come on this podcast? Yeah, you're like, come on this podcast. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll do that regularly. And so then on Fridays I started showing up for a podcast in like the morning. And then right after that we would have this writing meeting. And then more and more often I just started being on the Friday night stream. So I sort of had this like one day of of every week that I would take off of taking care of my toddlers and just come and hang out with adults. And it was really great for my mental health. I really appreciated that. <laughs> nice. Good. Yeah. No, it was a nice little, little glimmer of, um, talking to full people. Yeah. yeah. Talking to people who don't need me to change their diaper after I finished talking to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Usually a <laughs> couple exceptions, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Tune uh, back in for the 60 year anniversary. Well, 60. No, hang on. That's only 40 years from now. I hope not. Anyway. Um, also, why would we be making Nelson do it? This joke doesn't work for a variety of reasons. Uh, <laughs> me daydreaming me about this bit being cut out. Yeah. Now, oh, you know it won't. Yeah. yeah. So I guess if we want to switch over to Matt yeah. here. I'm uh, here too. Yes, you are. Yeah. So what was your introduction to to Loading Buddy Run? 
So I wrote notes before this just to jog my memory. And I was in university at the time. This is like 2012, 2013-ish mm -hmm. is when I, I think, regularly started watching the sketches and mm. the feed dump and that stuff. Um, the year or prior before that, I was visiting The Escapist to watch Zero Punctuation. Ah. What was or, the first sketch you watched? Do you remember? No, unfortunately. Uh, I do not remember the first sketch. But Something I, from The Escapist era. And it took one or two years of uh, the pop-up on The Escapist that said, hey, Desert Bus is happening for me to actually click it and start watching Desert Bus. So I watched a couple of those as well. Is that when you realized we were in Victoria? Or had you not yet even at that point realized? I think pretty early I realized okay. y'all were Canadian. It must have been obvious from like the background in some sketch or something. And be like, wait, that's this town. Everything just had like maple leaves all over the place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we do that. You all have that accent that I kind of have. I don't know. What do you mean? I don't have any accent, said everybody in the world. Yeah, yeah. But um, then I slowly but surely dropped out of university. <laughs> As happens As of, yeah, slow, the way you of do. Course. Slowly dropped out of university. Six years working on a uh, Bachelor of Arts. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was a slow process. Legends say some part of him is still dropping out to this day. Yeah. That's the, the university equivalent of quiet quitting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I dropped out of my Bachelor of Arts in only four years. Ooh, efficiency. Overachiever. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, and then I popped over to here to move with an ex of mine mm. briefly to Montreal. Oh. Oh, we really? went by Greyhound. Oh, no. To Montreal? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Don't do Ooh. that. And I detoxed from uh, university there for a couple months. How? Sorry, I got a... How long was that Greyhound ride? Three days. Dear sweet Christ. One day of that was Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> this country's big. Yeah. Um, oh, that sounds awful. I took the Greyhound once from here to PG to visit Kathleen, and that 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 was like 18 hours and miserable, backbreaking. When you're slowly but surely dropping out of university. <laughs> inevitably it, dropping out of university. Inevitably. It is actually like a mental cleanse to just be sitting on a bus for three days and literally be able to do nothing else. While, while also steadily getting farther away from the university. <laughs> yeah, were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once I popped back to Kamloops at the time uh -huh. and then moved like I initially meant to, to Victoria... <laughs> instead of just visiting there and moving to Montreal. The first week that I was here, number one, my now husband uh, propositioned me into a coffee date the first week. So nice. he locked me down immediately. Quickly, yeah. <laughs> but also I emailed Kathleen while I was still at the Backpackers Hotel here saying like, hey, I like this desert bus thing. And I volunteer for it. Right, because Kathleen was Desert Bus Coordinator, Desert Bus Volunteer Coordinator. Yeah, at the time. What was the first Desert Bus you volunteered for? DB8. Which was would have been... That was the one at... Was that like Tectoria? Viatech? Yeah. Something like one that, One of yeah. those buildings? Yeah, Not it was off, at the moon base. It was off-site, yeah. Hey, related, what was your first Loading Ready Run video you appeared in? The one I appeared in? <sighs> Balthazar? Everybody knows Balthazar. I think it was an interstitial for a live bit or oh, something. No, it was the Desert Bus opening titles. What? Yeah, because everyone, all the volunteers were in the Desert Bus opening titles video. The thing where I had all of the used up horns and halos on my head. Ah, yes. Has anyone yeah. gotten this question right? Because we both failed, right? We both bombed on what was your first loading running run. The wiki you're in. knows all. Yeah, exactly. yeah, some people have. It's, oh, nice. it's, okay. it, I, I think it's been, I don't know, James, it's been about 50-50. All right. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. Okay. Right. Anyway. I, I do know the first. James cheated because he knew because he looked them up. Yeah. I do know the first stream I was on. Oh, yeah. The 15th anniversary stream. <laughs> <laughs> Literally on nothing else until then. Incredible. <laughs> 
We'll I- finally allow Matt on. Now you, here's the thing. So you did Desert Bus uh, and continued to and can have, have continued yeah. to yeah. do. But after, I don't know if it was after Desert Bus 8 or 9, but at some point around then when we were in Moonbase Delta. Delta, yeah. Uh, you began the long con of ingratiating yourself through baked goods. Bequeathing people, tithing mm, the yeah. office with uh, pies and eventually scones because I ran out of novelty pies that I wanted to bake. And also um, uh, it gets expensive to bake pies <laughs> yeah. on the regular, <laughs> you know? Basically, Matt came to us and was like, hey, I would love to like, volunteer or work for you or whatever do some stuff i'd like to i'd like to help out at loading ready run and we were like that sounds cool we don't have any work and you were like okay well can i like come by and give you scones and we were like sure i guess why not and so basically every week some for a year some plate of like phenomenal stuff would uh would appear Mm -hmm. uh haven't seen a lot of scones lately no (laughs) yeah (laughs) Now, actually, I have, but you're buying them now. Are you okay? Is everything all right? You can be honest. I, I just like I, I just like carbs. You know. Yeah. Fair. Now, well, was that a deliberate no <laughs> maneuver? It was not. It was like if I get them hooked on my baked goods. <laughs> I am far too guileless mm. to act in such a way. Yeah, I never, I never got the vibe that you were trying to be like now. <laughs> This will ingratiate myself. Although, to be fair, somebody who was being conniving would also say that they were being guile, that they were guileless. Yeah. Mm, Tricky. Catch 22 right there. But you did. What I appreciated was that uh, you you had surmised where we had a uh, A bottleneck. A bottleneck, which was editing. Yeah. And you had sort of, you just volunteered the information. By the way, I have been looking into how to do Final Cut pro editing i've lived uh, you like you either had watched a bunch of tutorials or even taken a course not a course but i did watch a video or two yeah <laughs> i nice. took a page and a half of notes yeah some basics and it, so it's look that's more than some people yeah yeah <laughs> more than some people that have done editing here have done and so uh you know i was like oh really hmm interesting what was the first thing we had you edit oh that would be a little thing called um Oh, what was it? Road Quest? Oh, right. Yeah. I, right. I did that the was first such, pass. Did you, did you do the first pass? Point. Right. We really really threw you in on the deep end there. Well, so, Call it chunking. Yeah. That gotta, wasn't the plan. To be fair, that was not the intent. The yeah. plan had been that there would be a three-stage editing process mm. where Matt, who knew how to functionally use the program but hadn't had enough hands-on experience in making editing decisions because those yeah. are two different skill sets uh to do the yeah the 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 chunking pass where you take like here's here's all the gopro footage for this day it's five hours long go through and cut out any chunks where people aren't talking or that are that are, un- cl- that are clearly messing just messed up totally or... unusable right yeah. then there was going to be other people doing a second pass and then it was going to go to myself for the the final assembly that didn't happen the second layer there never actually materialized in a way that's not relevant to get into and so what ended up happening was we were sort of like well who knows the footage better than anybody else guess it's matt so (laughs) then matt ended up doing like 1.5 1.75 of the two steps and then i did 1.25 1.25 of the steps instead uh with kathleen doing all the all the audio work but um yeah yeah so matt did way more yeah it really was trial by fire wasn't it i mean to be fair you and kathleen got like the brunt of crunch work for that yeah but it was a very large project to start with mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of footage of just a road yeah hmm. Now, and I think, I don't know, I guess in some ways, uh, as an example of sort of relative maturity as a company, Mm. I think Matt would would be the first person we brought in uh, specifically as an editor. Yes. As opposed to 
people who we who were performing and then were like you know maybe they could do some editing as well mm-hmm. but matt was brought in we were like and as you say or uh, saying you know that was that was a real bottleneck and you know matt was somebody who was really good at doing doing that's the stuff that we needed to do yeah so important um and uh so th- i mean obviously that's been great and we now you know we have uh jordan as well and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's uh a, a, a whole process for for doing getting more into that you know if you have an entire uh an entire group of all actors and writers nothing actually gets past the final (laughs) yeah we've recorded so much great footage time to go home (laughs) yeah Um, as we have talked about many times in this podcast when people are around (laughs) enough then you get drafted into holding a boom you get drafted into uh you know being on streams uh being you know first usually like random background walk by things and in, in sketches yeah don't paraphrase jeff goldblum to me maybe that attitude is why people find you annoying james i just can't believe they didn't interact with each other until today i wonder if there's anyone else who works here that we don't know about then more in sketches hey mortal you look nothing like your photo nelly when did you break out of just like oh yeah nelly's on the magic stuff when did you start doing like crossing the streams and afk and stuff was that was that after a time or was that right away when you were like hey i'll do any of that a pandemic yeah, it was for a lot of it basically i think uh, i yeah. like was probably willing to do any of that stuff but i don't think i was really uh like asked or like in i, I hadn't found my way to a planning meeting i think until like right. 2020 yeah okay so but yeah i guess yeah you you during the yeah during the pandemic i guess you had more time and availability <laughs> sure. and kind of need to do <laughs> need to do stuff well in some ways yeah. yeah that whole period uh changed a lot of the whole setup in a lot of ways mm-hmm. and we'll probably have been talking about that in the first part of this episode the thing i always i i i i was thinking about with with matt when you once you sort of came on to uh to uh you know first how about with editing and then the streams and stuff is that crossing the streams or afk you know sort of group streams were sometimes difficult to staff up um and so uh i think there there was a there was a period where where matt was on like 90 percent of the stream of, of the like afk streams uh not because you were like put me on these streams but because it was like you want to be on these streams cricket and matt would be like sure i'd be up for that yeah. <laughs> yep. i'm here and we're like yes <laughs> great that's one <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay we need seven more for this jackbox stream <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> those became a thing during the pandemic we didn't yeah. do those before, I don't yeah. think. Well, we we did like one or two live, but then but for during like the Boxing during, Day or something. Yeah, right. during the pandemic, they uh, uh, and of course we have kept doing them. But mm. it turned out that those we figured out various things that worked better, or that that worked well remotely. It used to be that we would do sort of like one, we would well two group streams a week. One would be magic, and then we would be doing like tabletop gaming. Or occasionally we'd like use that time slot for some sort of multiplayer video game. Uh, at least I think it tended to take over the AFK time slot if it was going to happen. And then during the pandemic, there was no AFK really, so it was mostly crossing the streams. But then when we started coming back to doing in-person stuff, we were like, "That was great, and people liked it. Like we like doing it, and people like watching it." Let's so now we now we yeah, are doing we, we crossing really, the streams and AFK. We really fell off on crossing the streams um, before the mm-hmm. pandemic. Just it was just like we people didn't really want people weren't really into it. Yeah, turns out uh, was, we've all got a new appreciation for gaming together online. The infrastructure for it got better too with the pandemic. It sure <laughs> yeah, did. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Everyone's got their own cameras and stuff now. Yeah. And, and also it tends to actually be one of the easier streams to be on. Mm-hmm. Just in general, like you sit down at your desk at home and you're ready. 
Yeah, I think one of the things we all got better at during the pandemic was like trying to keep in touch with people who don't live in the same town as we do. And mm -hmm. so like, you know, Monday night crossing the streams was like a good way to do that. It's yeah. like, you know, Wiggins or like Olivia, you know, would be like sort of regular, like, you know, of the of, you know, and and dozens or if not hundreds of others over the years, right? Like all of like friends of Loading Re run. Um and so that's I've really liked that. Or, like or like that. even like that we we've kept up with that. Yeah, yeah. Or even Guests people, and stuff. even people who live up in like Saanich or over in Esquimalt. So far, so, so far, far away. away. <laughs> but you know, far enough that it's easier for to, them to see us online. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fair. I have to get on a bus. No, <laughs> <laughs> moving here from Kamloops, where the walking to and from university. Not uphill both ways, but uphill going home, 45 minutes. Bull. Kamloops winters, because that's like half the school year. Oh, no. I don't want to ever return to that kind of life. No. And Victoria is quite good at allowing me to completely avoid that kind of experience anymore. Mm -hmm. My entire tenure here mm. has basically been learning everything at work in terms of like doing a lot of editing i'm learning stuff there and especially with the early sketches and stuff i learned a lot of uh acting and filmography stuff was you mentioned you had a background in theater just a little bit just a little bit i was in like the school plays in high school and then i also did some um volunteer work this is still in high school but through the uh co-op cap program like career or career oh, prep yeah. co-ops not cap sorry career prep co-op program i did in grade 12 I where it was, it was still like, cap it was it's sort of like under the umbrella of cap or career something. and personal planning is what yeah. they called it in british yeah Columbia. no cap but this was yeah so th but this wasn't the one uh one block course that like everybody had to take in grade 11 or 12 or whatever this was uh this was like two whole block so it was like half of one semester yeah like all my afternoons were either classes where we were getting ready to go out and get jobs or like that that was only the first three or four weeks i think and then so like all of october november december was just like okay yeah you can use this time although you can use other time too you can use whatever time you want but mm. you have enough hours to go out and get like 150 hours of um basically like free internship you can go and get and you can work and you'll get school credit instead of being paid so it's like going to be pretty easier for you to go get a job you're you know 16 17 maybe 18 year old kids or whatever doing this and so you should have some skills some competency and i did most of it honestly at a boston pizza i like went and worked as like a you know dishwasher and and uh prep cook. wretched job <laughs> but wretched also, job wow have you worked at a boston pizza I've worked as a dishwasher before. Oh, I see. It's yeah. a little corner of hell. Yeah. <laughs> and, well, I didn't love, love it. But that was my first time. I have some fond memories. I like the people and stuff. I cooked a lot of food, too. I did more cooking than, okay. than dishwashing. But yeah, dishwashing is tough. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but then also during that program, I worked at Shaw Cable. A oh, little nice. bit, like holding a camera and like trying to put together footage with like a VHS tape and like learning Excellent. a tiny bit about we editing we there. We didn't talk about, in our origin episode, we didn't talk about your time at Rogers Television, did we? Uh, I don't know if, yeah, I don't think we mentioned it too much. But yeah, I worked, uh, I did a volunteer uh, thing working at a, uh, working on a, a TV show for Rogers. Nice. As a. Uh, as a cameraman and, and uh, uh, doing graphics and did stuff. you did you hold the camera for like the political debates? I yeah, did that. Yeah. I did that gig too. Nice in like yeah, nineteen ninety nine. The like... show was called Voice of the Province. Excellent. It was like about Ooh. about whatever political issues. Sweet. And then I also worked at Langham Court Theater, like hanging light. I didn't really know what I was doing, but I learned like where a gel goes and like yeah. learned how to like nice. tighten a clamp of a of a light on on a, you know I forget what it's called the on ceiling the of the theater the grid. Thank yeah. you. This was a while ago. Trust. Although I've been working under one this whole time, but like, you know, I know Ben doesn't want me going anywhere near it, so I just kind well, of don't look up. <laughs> you're a gamer. You don't look up. So I did that, and I don't know. That's about it. But you discovered you can play trombone. Also spent, yeah, I, 
it's like you guys were bragging about how soon you got out of university. Unfortunately, yeah, I kept my mouth shut, but I was like, while that was all going on or bef- a little bit before, uh, I had completed my bachelor's of music in seven years. Nice. Um, so I think that's like the biggest L between like, like Graham won because he got out after four years, right? <laughs> Hey, you, you have paper. You actually have something, have something to show for. You got yeah, to agree, but... I don't know yeah. where it is, but yeah, I can probably request to have a copy printed or something. Yeah. Yeah, I did, I guess. And I, I, can, play, like, I can play a trombone. It was so close, too. It was... Mm. Uh, right, I but was would just, it make any difference now? No, I was just done with it. I was... I mean... Your mom would be proud. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But I, well, I, I literally was like, but when I get out, I want to get the job that I have. Yeah. That yeah. I'm doing. So. Well, and for mine, I finished all the courses I needed for my minor... It was just my geography major that I needed a year, half a year worth of courses, mm-hmm. worth of credits in order to finish. But that wasn't what you cared about. Nope, didn't yeah. didn't get those. Nope. Fair. Yeah, I I the, I think my minor in film studies was was secured. I hate that you can't, to my knowledge, anyway, just get a minor. Hmm. Just get like a it's minor. diploma programs yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But usually if you go to university, they want to start you with like a degree. Yeah. My my plan now is to ensure the continuation of Loading Ready Run so that it becomes culturally relevant enough to Canada that UVic gives me an honorary degree. Oh, there Ooh. you go. Yeah. That's that's the plan now. And now um, my plan is to ride those coattails yeah. Yeah. and uh, hope that UVic has to and, hand out like, you know, what I assume will be 400 honorary degrees by the time this happens. That'll be the size of the company, right? I like the idea of getting the honorary degree of the degree that you started for but, didn't, for four but years? didn't get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Like, we'd like to give you an honorary degree of, I don't know what they what it would be. Presumably it'd be art related anyway, maybe like performing arts or theater mm. or something. And I'd be like, actually... <laughs> <laughs> Could it be visual art with a minor in film studies? <laughs> Why? Do like, they give? Do like, they, look, call up my credits. I'm most of the way there. <laughs> do they give minors like a, like a so. minor yeah. for for a, a honorary degree? I don't think, but that's what I, I would specifically request. Yeah, that, it's like, can I just funny. get? Yeah, can I just get some honorary credits that I can put towards? <laughs> yeah. the degree I'm already getting. Can you yeah. imagine? Okay, are we writing this sketch? It's like Beyonce is being called up by Berkeley or something, and she, and they're like, "Hey, we want to give you this honorary doctorate," and she's just like, "Okay, that's cool, but can I also get an honorary um, medical doctorate as mm. well, and an honorary doctor of law, you know, and can like I, or, with a minor in I in be, cuisine, you know?" Can or I something? become a Microsoft certified systems engineer, yeah. Yeah. please. <laughs> Yeah. Please. Can I transfer my honorary credits from this other honorary degree I'm getting from this other institution? <laughs> Start stacking them up. Yeah. You're Voltroning your honorary degrees. Only yeah. up to two years of that honor- honorary right. degree. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Has to be a, a accredited. accredited institution. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This is honorary degrees from an online school. Well, they're a real, hey, yeah. look, d- remote learning is real. Online is real life. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> anyway. So is there anything, I mean, you know, we've talked about sort of like, you know, Friday nights and road quests, those are big, but, you know, is there anything else for either of you to sort of jump out but, as like, uh, I don't know, a, what do they call them now? Core memory? I don't know. Something, some what, sort of. What, what I was thinking is like, once you got more sort of deeply involved in Loading Ready Run. Dug in. Yeah. Is there, is there anything that was very surprising <laughs> to you <laughs> or like. About the process of making the videos or doing all the stuff that we do that you were like, that's how that happens? Or that's a, that's a thing? You have to do that? Great question. Sorry, the, the biggest surprise I think I've gotten since my time uh, at the company was just James puts out the calls like... So it could have been anyone, right? It's like anybody want to go on this free trip to Barcelona, and I, I was like, yes, but I, I also had just gone a free trip to Minnesota, which you know maybe doesn't sound as glamorous, but I was really excited to go, and I had a fun time in Minneapolis, and I'd never been to Minneapolis before, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna get passed over for sure. And there was only like five other people from the crew who clicked that they wanted to go, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I, I can. Give you okay. at least two reasons why I didn't All right. even glance at the Barcelona trip. Number I would have tried to play Magic the week before if you wanted. Okay. Number one, I just don't play Magic anymore. Right. Yeah, really. that, that would have been a that would have been a hard sell. Yeah, I only played it for like maybe two years there. Number two, this is Barcelona, right around the time when people were talking about it going through a heat wave. Yeah, we did dodge a bullet there. It was yeah. quite warm. It was. I mean, we dodged the bullet, and it was still rough. Yeah, I made. 
I'm made of mm, some sort of slushy. Mm-hmm. I don't know that you could get from like Seven Eleven here. I would die. I would mm-hmm. melt. You're a little sugar castle. Yeah. I I, w- I had to be ephemeral. like I was like chugging Powerade because I was losing not only the water but also the electrolytes. I mean, Although it worked worked a treat. Yeah, you're already a sweaty man in this room. <laughs> I know. I know. Why? Why not sponsored so by Powerade? Yeah. No. Yeah. Other drinks are available. Yes. Pedialyte. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> the funniest surprise for me is entering the prop room, like just any given day, <laughs> and just the state of it. If we're going wow. to make a creepy shrine, then we're going to need a creepy doll. Didn't even pass through That's my what we mind. have here. Wow. Perfect. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <hi. laughs> what? <laughs> Legit did not see it. For you. <laughs> oh. oh my god. <laughs> oh, very respectful. Time. Mm. Oh. Oh man. Because of course, yeah. Because uh, of course, you and Kathleen and and Cameron to a certain extent. Um, have been the ones who who often it has fallen to to when we do like periodic prop room purges yeah uh to do organization of course uh you and kathleen uh uh set up the the new set for the new afk set and all that stuff so you probably have like gone through our props more than most of us have Mm -hmm. at least in recent memory Mm. although um Last time, Jordan and James did a lot of work, too. Jordan and Kathleen uh, sorted through the entire small hand props, <laughs> that whole shelf, while I went home and um, was taking care of my recently acquired, in the last month or so, puppy. Mm. So The creature. The creature. Miss Ma'am. That's basically so it- been my life for the last... Four-ish months is puppy stuff. Dog. So, so you were you, you you were expecting that our uh, the like props and costumes would be better organized than they are. Look, look like someone other than just like a random teenage boy had put them together, right? I wasn't expecting that. Um, it was disappointing every time I walked into that room, though. I mean, it was a bit of a disappointing me. room, just yeah. in general. Yeah, yeah, it's a little better now, uh, because it's the same room as the studio, so we, we can't let it get that bad. It's true, yeah. Especially well, and post Desert Bus was rough. And it's also, we just have, you know, we have more room now. And yeah, all kind of and stuff. less stuff. Yeah. yeah. But every time I would walk in, I'd, like, turn to, I don't know, Paul is probably the closest person, because he's at the tech desk at the time uh, at the previous moon base and go like, damn, man, you live like this? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't tell people how I live. <laughs> I have like another sort of similarly embarrassing low light I can share, which oh, was just, it was no skin off my nose or anything. It was fine. But I guess a little window into like how all, you know, all the moving pieces, like everyone, everything still just requires like a human remembering to do the thing and like grabbing the baton at the right time and stuff. So we were recording a podcast. It should have been, it would have been TTC. And it's like, I want to say either the nicknames episode or we might've been doing like a limited set review for one of the guilds of Ravnica sets, maybe, Mm -hmm. or like the third one from that block war of the spark, maybe one of those around, around that time period, I think anyways. And so we're going through, we do a full, like, hour and 10 hour and 20 minute podcast but like i had kind of noticed something was different but i'm still like you know i mean it'd been a couple years or whatever but i still even today right i'm still sort of like new guy on the block just like relatively speaking in terms of like the people who are in the room and like how long how much expertise there is in producing this podcast so i didn't want to speak up but sure enough like hour and 10 hour and 15 minutes we're almost done like you're you're saying goodbye and then we kind of all realized like oh we haven't been recording this whole time and like then like the first minute of the podcast i had thought don't those numbers normally go up like once we're <laughs> once we're doing this like i feel like every other time i've been staring at the screen the numbers are moving i don't want to bother anyone 
You know yeah. what I mean? I'm like, I don't want to stick my neck out right here. You yeah. Know? I don't yeah. want, I don't want, I don't want to be the butt of a joke. Right. Right. When we're starting the podcast, like, I don't want to, I don't want to make any, any waves. Yeah, I don't want to rustle any numbers feathers. Are supposed to go up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want, I don't need the numbers to go up for my convenience. It's fine. I can just do the podcast. I'm sure. Everything's fine. And then, yeah, sure enough. It's like, oh yeah, we forgot to hit record. <laughs> so. Losing. It's happened more often than the, I mean any amount of time is more often than than you would like. It's happened more sure. often than we'd like where we've through some sort of technical failure or something, you know, like lost a recording. And mm. like on on the one hand, it's only an hour of work and it's something that most of the time it's something replicable, right? Like rarely right. have we lost stone irreplaceable footage. Right. But on the other hand, it is a weirdly and to me as well and I agree that it is and it probably should be a weirdly large hit to morale yeah, yeah right it just yeah, feels yeah. real bad yeah and but in that, f- i could feel the room sank as y'all realize and, and what trying, happened and trying to sort of because you, you sort of want to replicate the the sort of novelty and enthusiasm yeah. of that first time and yeah. there's some times where it's like and, and you have to evaluate right because sometimes it's like okay let's just do it again yeah sometimes it's let's Let's try again tomorrow. Like yeah. I, I, I am not emotionally equipped yeah. to do this again, even if we yeah. have time. Yeah. I, re- I recall that one not necessarily being the worst because it was, it was like, I forgot to press record, you know, and it's like that it sucked, obviously, right? Yeah. But it was better than like, hey, we did it, everything's great, all done, and then and then like three days later, it's like. Hey everybody! I'm really sorry to report that uh, n- none of that worked. You know, like that's that, right. that, that's that's a bad feel yeah. as well. But oof. yeah, remember um, that one or two episodes of from Rewatch with Love where my initial pass of the edit got wiped clean. Oh, oh yeah, no. Final Cut error, and it like did a there was some sort of synchronization with the library, and it was like bloop, just eliminated all that. That mm. was that was bad. That unfortunately does take a bit longer than recording a yeah, podcast unfortunately. episode. <laughs> Luckily, it's just you though. You mean like just your work? Okay, that's, at least it's only that's one person. More easily, yeah. Work aroundable, replicable, yeah, yeah. Than it than it is to actually record it all again. But oof. yeah, the this disappointing part about this, so long. yeah, it was like it was like kind of a relevant podcast, like you know, time sensitive or whatever. And it was like, right. no, we couldn't, we couldn't just do it right then. As I was saying earlier, the writing meeting was about to start. Yeah. So we had to all try to rally to get, uh, to get into the mood to write some more sketches that we had just like had our hearts sink because we don't have a podcast. I think the episode of, from rewatch that that happened to was on her Majesty's secret service, which was the, oh, longest, the longest episode. episode. Oh, God. oh good. Oh, <laughs> Good. It's like but an hey, extra I, long afternoon of yours just gone. Yeah. From what I saw of the movie, because I was scrubbing through it to get screenshots, it is my favorite Bond movie. It's oh, great. Good. So. It's a good. It, it, it's good fun. I'm glad you <laughs> fa- got best, to watch. It. Thank God it wasn't like die another day. Die another. Never say never again. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, I like that. I like that as a point of review. Of it's like best Bond movie to scrub through. <laughs> <laughs> love like, diana rig it's like it might not have been that great as an actual movie to watch straight but if you've got to like jump through it and look for little clips yeah. excellent movie yeah well i think that sort of covers things pretty uh, much yeah. generally speaking um matt you i mean you 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 work here but you exist as goat prince in various places on the internet like on mastodon mastodon uh nelly you home stream from time to time i do i'm coach nelly on twitch and most of the social media is i'm either coach nelly or coach nelly mtg yeah if coach nelly was taken <laughs> what who would who what other coach nellies are out there there's all kinds of great coach nellies they coach right. various sports i've looked into them it turns out no matter how kind of cute and unique your name might be if you're trying to vie for the entire internet someone probably has already taken it mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you just need to get i uh, now i just want like a big meetup all the coach oh, nellies all the coach and, and then just so you can just be all like coach the coach, gathering of the nellies coach nelly yeah coach, coach nelly, nelly. Was it coach nelly? nelly wasn't for yeah. a period of time matt wiggins in a in a Matt Wiggins Facebook group? I believe so, yes. Yeah. It was just people named Matt Wiggins. I think James was going for a James Turner group. Nice. I love the idea, Nelson, of you being like, what? Why is there a Coach Nelly on this thing? This can't be a real person. Oh, no. Okay. 
They're a, yeah, they, teach, they, are. they teach basketball in the Soyuz. All right. Mm. Yeah, I don't know why I went with the Soyuz. Anyway, uh, <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us uh, for this, Nelson. My pleasure. And Matt. Woo! Appreciate it. And now, previously, this has been where we've wrapped up. But for this episode, we're going to throw it back to ourselves for some final thoughts on the whole breadth of everything we've just talked about. So now, back to us. Thanks, me. Welcome to the ending yeah. of this episode and of the uh, 20th anniversary podcast as a whole. But not Loading Ready Run. Not Loading Ready Run, because as we, far as we know. No, because we joked for years. It's like, what, what, what else would we do? Mm. Right? Like, we don't... As, the joke that was written down, I think it's on our about page on the website, is like, you know, we hope this keeps going because we don't have any transferable skills. Obviously, that's not accurate anymore, especially now with, you know, how much video production and online stuff is going on. But this is what we want to do. And yeah. I'm so happy that we get to. <laughs> yeah. You know, it has been, uh, it, I mean, it's especially in this these this last couple of months, uh, as we've been coming towards the the, the 20th anniversary, mm. uh, we've had you know this podcast and we did the the sketch bracket and a few other things. So there's been many occasions of sort of looking back and reminiscing mm -hmm. on stuff. And you know it's 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 definitely you know that it's been a long crazy journey. Yeah, <laughs> and it really has. And, and you know like anything, uh, any any situation. Oh, uh, you know, you're the, the, the point, the, the, all the different decisions, the little, the little things that happened along the way that got us to where we are now, you know, if anything had changed, who knows, butterfly effect, you know, there was all sorts of opportunities that things could have gone different ways. I, uh, you know, I applied for various jobs that I didn't get mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that would maybe I would be going off and, you know, be a web designer for some random company. There are different things that happen to work out. Maybe things, you know, of course, maybe we could be in a better position than we are now. Maybe but that get in be, on the ground floor at YouTube. Who knows? Yeah. yeah. Although to be honest, I don't know. It's, it's hard to, in a, it's hard to imagine in sort of a realistic world that much better a scenario than we're in now yeah. in terms of in, in terms of uh you know being where we want to be if, in terms of production if we'd been higher profile sooner would we have been bought by someone would we have not sold would we have wanted to be like no no we want to keep being independent or would we have been like yeah that makes sense and then had had the thing had it taken away from us and had to did, go do other stuff you know if, did the like casey neistat like sell the thing for a bunch of money and then just like leave <laughs> right yeah or like i mean look at smosh right they they had their company basically bought out from under them and it was saved by Rhett and Link, who basically bought the brand at a fire sale and then recently, only recently re it returned it to the actual Smosh people. Yeah. Right? I mean, like, what a, what a, there's, there's, I'm. All sorts of different ways things could have gone. Yeah, we've, we've, we've had a couple bad agreements and signed a one or two contracts that I guess I wish I hadn't in retrospect. But broadly speaking, the fact that we've managed to, you know, keep sailing and, uh, and be in the position that we're in now without tremendous issue has been, uh, you know, I'm very, I feel incredibly lucky. And it's, you know, it's, it's, this is 20, 20th anniversary. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, personally, I just turned 40. So I, like we started loading ready run when I was 20. So mm -hmm. I've now been doing loading ready run for half my life. Yep. Uh, and, and so, that, that, you know, that's a pretty big milestone. Uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a pretty, um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a sort of a strange thing to think about. Yeah. Um, but it, it's also, you know, it's that thing where, you know, is it the life is what happens to you when you're busy making other plans? You know, that's the, it's how it works, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it turns out 
this is what I did when I grew up. <laughs> yeah. In my high school yearbook, I was voted because they gave everyone a vote so that no one left got left out. <laughs> so oh, I was voted most likely to appear in a British sitcom. Well, then you'll love this new podcast I found. It's called Fair Comparisons, and it weighs the pros and cons of different municipal bus systems from all around the world. The first episode pits Bucharest against the... Hey, Corey, can you help me move a body? Just didn't think I'd have to make it myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost, almost got there. We're not that British. I'm half British, so I guess anything that I'm involved in, we can say has, has enough of that DNA. Sure, yeah. But yeah, it's like, you know, like, yeah, I guess, I guess Friday Nights and Commodore Hustle is, those are sitcoms. I guess just made made our own sitcom sure why not that that counts yeah check that box off does i mean this goes back to what we said in the in the the very first episode of this which was you know like when i was doing my degree because i didn't really know what i wanted to do i loved doing all the stuff with video and i loved making things with you but i didn't know what i wanted to do like as a career and then right. when it was getting when this was getting more serious and it was getting to a point in university where it's like doing this is negatively affecting my ability to do loading ready run and when i get this degree what kind of job do i want to have i want to have this job i want to do this i want to entertain people so i sort of i'm already there really and you know now i've got to spend i mean i mean i'm a year younger than paul so more than half my life now i now that you've put it in those terms i was like holy crap it's more than half my life <laughs> Uh, you know, getting to make dumb jokes and hang out with people whose whose company I love making making you people and, laugh. So, and of course, you know, back when we were doing, you know, twenty years ago, of course, mm. we had no conception no. that this is what it could be, or that you, oh. I don't know if we even like. You know, you weren't. We weren't even thinking about this. Is what we, what like we are in that. You know, our our ideal scenario back then probably would have been something closer to like, you know, Saturday Night Live or yeah. Kids in the Hall or, or get, something. Get discovered and get on get a show on CBC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember actually distinctly uh, realizing over time that it's like it's going to be easier to just do our thing and the internet will become TV <laughs> rather than for us to <laughs> rather than for us to try to get on TV. We'll just keep doing what we're doing. And then, you know, the internet is basically TV anyway now. Yeah. So, hey, that worked. We just kind of got there. Yeah, we couldn't have predicted streaming. We couldn't have predicted how that would all turn out, you know, or how how video yeah, that, would take that, off online. And, and that, yeah, and that Loading Ready Run now looks very different in terms of not only in terms of what we uh the kinds of content that create we create and who's involved in all this kind of stuff um but i i feel like especially i mean it's we've been watching you know we've been rewatching old sketches because of the sketch bracket and stuff uh, i i like to think that there's a there's a lot of that still here that you, you look at some of those old sketches like yeah those are those those were solid those yeah. were excellent. Those were great jokes. We'd pretty much make the same joke now. <laughs> yeah, most of them. Yeah, not all of them. Not all, all of obviously, them, but, but a lot but of them. I was like, a lot of them, you're like, I totally forgot. I have totally forgotten the sketch, but it's pretty good. Yeah. No, it's good. It's a good feeling. It's it's really nice to be able to to both look back on what we've made before and still remain ultimately proud of it and look forward and be excited about new things we get to make so. and, and like look back and be like yeah you know we've made we made a joke very similar to that like on a stream like literally like a week ago or something <laughs> so you know <laughs> you've changed man yeah mm. only for the better i think yeah so hey thanks everybody for not just watching this podcast but watching anything we do for just being here being part of all of this and I don't know. Hope that you stick around and continue to be part of it going forward. Cause you know, it's, sometimes I'll come across a Reddit comment or whatever. That's like, Oh yeah, right. Loading, ready, run. Whatever happened to them? No, we're still here and we're going to keep on being here. So hopefully uh, you're here to enjoy that with us.
Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I've been Graham. And I am still Paul. And James has been with us recording all of these and uh, everyone who you've seen on on camera in one of these episodes uh, and more people who we couldn't involve in all the episodes just for sheer space and time. Uh, you know, thanks to all of them and everyone who's contributed to Loading Ready Run over the years, but ultimately the most to you for being here and watching it. So thanks. Later. Bye.